Hey, John. Hey, Alice. Miss Wedgworth's class asked, what are some of the traditions of the Southeastern Native Americans? Some of the traditions of the Southeastern Native Americans were a sport called kabochatoli, which involved two kabuch sticks and a ball uh, that's about like golf ball sized, made out of deer skin. And the ball in Shota is referred to as toa. And we use this to, um, we used to use this back in the day to settle disputes among other tribes in the southeastern um, part. And it's still played today, but there's different variations across the nation. So yeah. <laughs> and right here is a rabbit stick, which we used to hunt back in the day. And it's still... The kids still use it today as like a practice. Um, but yeah, we still use it. Anything you would like to add? Yeah, sure. So an item I have is this basket, which is called tapushik in our Choctaw language. And so there are different variations of basketry that we have, but this in particular used to carry like vegetables such as squash, um, potatoes, etc. So that when the women are carrying this basket, they carry the vegetables with them so that they can take it home and feed their families. The next item I have is this drum. Let's switch roles. <laughs> is this drum here. This is a very significant item that we have within our traditions because the drum represents the heartbeat of our people. So when the men drum, they usually make a sound of the heartbeat. And so the drum was used for, for war, but also a way to, to signal that war is coming, that our teams are coming from different areas of villages. And I thought that was a really interesting story. And so our men would drum to signal war, to signal that it's time to come. And so with that being said, you see the strings here that create a diamond that also has a significant meaning to it, which represents the Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake. And so in our Choctaw language, we call it Sinti, which is snake. And so the reason why we honored the Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake is because they were there to feed off the rodents or any insects that were trying to ruin our crops that our ancestors had to feed their families. So it's a really significant story that we hold true to our traditions. Miss Barham's class had asked, how did Southeastern Native Americans travel? Southeastern Native Americans traveled by canoes. They walked, they run, and so they had to be creative with what they had outside in the woods, or they had to think about, oh, how can we travel? How, where do we need to go? And so they would say, okay, let's go this way, because most of our people knew where to go especially the men because, you know, they had to go outside in the woods and hunt. And so they knew where to go. They would tell their families, okay, we're going to go this way to get some medicine. We're going to go this way to get some food. We'll be right back. And so I only know a few stories that my grandparents have told me, which is really interesting because he said that one of his friends took him off into the woods and said, hey, let's, let's go over here. Let's go look at this land and let's see if we can go play some games like sick ball. And I thought it was really cool because I was like, no way you guys went. He said, yeah, we went barefoot. We didn't have shoes. We didn't have nothing like that. So, yeah, so we went to the woods, and they came upon a river, and this is where they found a log that in, sh in the shape of a canoe, and they said, let's go ride. Let's go ride down the river bend. <laughs> <laughs> and so they would find sticks so that they can be able to travel and, you know, turn and everything, and I thought mm. that was really interesting, and I said, I would love to try that one day. And so, <laughs> besides walking and running, they used logs to ride across the river. <laughs> Miss Wyndham's class asked, what are some of the games some of the Southeastern Native Americans played? And I'm about to show you um, Kabocha Toli, or stickball, in the English language as it's called. Um which is you have two kabucha sticks, which are two wooden sticks that are kind of like lacrosse shaped, but this is before lacrosse. 
And the uh, ball we play with is a leather wrapped from deer skin. And we basically have to shoot this at a pole. And there, on the field, there's two poles, which are football field size. Okay. Um, back in the day, they used to have many players on the field from 100 people to at least like 1,000. And the size of the field that was played on used to be over 100 miles. So it could be from here from in Hattiesburg to Philadelphia, Mississippi, where I'm from. And uh, the game is referred to as the Little Brother War since it was used to help uh, settle disputes among communities, tribes, and families. Um, and it was used to avoid going all-out war and yeah uh, I'm from Philadelphia Mississippi and I play for the stickball team <laughs> Warriors so yeah Miss Barham's class asked what are some of the traditional meals that Southeastern Native Americans eat okay so some traditional meals that Southeastern American Indians eat included hominy some wildlife, I'll tell you two wildlife, which is deer and turtle, which is Issy and Luxy. And in front of us today is Banaha. So would you like to tell us the history about it? Absolutely. So back in the day, our ancestors were farm laborers. And so when they would work out into the field, gathering their crops to feed their families, they would be in the hot sun. And so when they would go on their break, they would say, what's another source of us to restore those nutrients? And so the women would make banaha. And so it was another source of an item that's similar like tamales. It's really good. Um, different families have variations of how they like to make it. And so it was really nice to know the story that my grandmother had told me about the history of banaha. Yeah, I remember you mentioned to me it was like a protein bar too. Yeah, Okay, that's absolutely. really cool. Okay, so today... We'll teach you how to make banaha. Our ingredients include, include conca, tobi, tunchi, and cornmeal, which is chicken, corn husk, and beans. Okay. Okay, we're gonna pour some more juice. Just a little bit more. Okay. And that's good. And now we're gonna stir it real good. So I'm just pressing down on it so that all of the cornmeal can be incorporated into a paste like. It's kind of like a stiff paste. So, like that. And then now we are going to pour some peas in there. A little bit more. Okay. And instead of pressing down on it, we're just going to flip the peas so that it can be incorporated into the cornmeal. And now we're going to add some chicken, some conca, into the cornmeal. Not too much, just enough. And again, we're going to flip it into the cornmeal. Okay. And then now, we are going to mold it into a little ball. So you grab enough, about the size of the palm of your hand, and then you're going to Mold it like that. You can add some more. Add a piece of chicken in there. Like that. And then, move that to the side. You're going to put it in the corn husk like that. And then you're going to wrap it.
and then you're going to get two strands of the corn husk and then you're going to tie it together so that it's long enough to tie around flip it and tie it just like you're tying a shoe like that and there you go so once you get it tight enough to where it's not coming out that's when you put it into a boiling water and you let it sit in the boiling water for 45 minutes. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Stop. This, okay, here we go. This is Wed Wedgeworth's Wedgeworth. class. Wedgeworth? Wedgeworth? I think so. Mm -hmm. Hey, John. Hey, Alice. Miss Wedgeworth's class asked, what are some of the traditions of the South Sea Tour? <laughs> Hold on, mate. Hey, well, my phone's in the shop. That's the thought. <laughs> <laughs> right here, we got a rabbit stick. And we used to use it for hunting rabbits or chukfis, as uh, in the tribal Choctaw tribal language. And we now use it for, like, um... Uh, Fun times, like just, you know, just like a. Oh my god, my, <laughs> my mind went blank. Well, well, well. Oh. <laughs> it's all, all right. <laughs> okay. Love the enthusiasm. Give right. it up. Got to. Okay. Miss Barnum's class. At wait, sorry. <laughs> Miss Barham's class asked, what are some of the traditional meals that Southeastern Native Americans eat? Okay, so, South, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, Southeastern, Southeastern, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to ask again? Yeah, ask again, ask again. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. Miss Barham's class asked, what are some of the traditional foods that Southeastern Native Americans eat? Okay, so, so some traditional foods which you'll be surprised mostly comes from vegetables, especially corn, which banaha, hominy, meat you can think of, isi, which is deer, loxi would be turtle. Okay, I kind of went blank, not gonna lie. I, my mind went blank. Alice, yes. how did... <laughs> okay. Okay, <laughs> why are you gonna say it? Okay, you already have. <laughs> and... Yeah.